We eat thousands of these things every single week. Of course, it's the beautiful Greek pitta, and I'm gonna show you how to make them. Now get baking. My students today are friends Kate and Kim. Kim admits her baking leaves a lot to be desired, but she's desperate to improve. And Cafe owner Kate bakes cakes but never makes bread. Also baking along are partners Patrick, a self-confessed foodie, and Russell, who can't bake but makes a mean fried breakfast. But my next bread, a pitta, is so easy, I'm sure all of them will master it in no time. Now, have any of you guys made pitta before? No. Never. No. Haven't even thought of it. No. Pitta bread is, is so versatile. The actual way that it works in an oven is fascinating. You'll be able to see it grow in the oven and bloom up right in front of your eyes. And it's actually very quick to do. In the bowl, I've actually got wholemeal flour, stone ground wholemeal flour, and I've got white flour. So I'm doing half and half. And to blend that together, again, takes the pitta to another level. To my flour, I'm adding olive oil, instant yeast, salt, and cool water. Then just give it a quick mix with your hand. Straight away, I've got something I can work with. It's best to add the water a little at a time until you have a soft, sticky dough. I'm using wholemeal flour because it's quite a grainy mixture and it does absorb the olive oil and it tends to balloon it a little bit when you're proving up, certainly when you're baking it. Put a little bit of flour on the bench and all I do is just fold it up and you can see almost straight away you've got a dough. It's, it's literally there. Do you want to feel that? Oh yeah, really, really nice. It's, yeah. it's yeah. lovely and it's soft. soft. It feels lively, doesn't it? Yeah. Like you feel the wheat. And that's in literally as well. within five mm. seconds. Mm. Because I'm only using 250 gram, it's considerably smaller. So it's, it, you do it with one hand. So with this hand, <laughs> you can basically have a cup of tea, do whatever you want, answer the door, answer the phone. <laughs> now while you're having a cuppa, keep kneading the dough. It should become less sticky if you follow my simple technique. This is basically a folding technique. So all I'm doing is just rolling it up, flattening it down, rolling it up, flattening it down. You'll know when your dough is ready when it feels smooth and silky. Then cover the dough and leave it to double in size. So I've got a dough down here that's been resting for about an hour and a half, two hours. You see how big it grows. Now this will make two pitters, good sized pitters, or four little ones if you like. Now, if I just split that, you shape them into balls, put, you, put your fingers over the top, and then just spin it round. There you go. OK? Just flatten each ball with your fingers and roll out into an oval. Roll them out quite thin. It's normal for pitters to be quite thin, obviously. But you want to take them to a little bit of an oval. And you can see the shape of the, the pitter now. See? That's basically where you want to be. Put the pitta onto a tray with some flour and then transfer to a hot oven. I've got a tray in there which has already been preheated. Slide it on there, close it up, leave it for 10 minutes. What you're looking for is the slightest bit of colour to arrive on the top. And you see almost a dryness happening on the top of the pitta. That's when it's ready. If you have a look in there, you see it's, it's doming slightly. What's happening is the outside of the pitta quickly seals in the oven and then steam pushes it up into a pillow shape. Time to see if my students have been paying attention. They've already got some pitta dough and all they have to do is shape it and roll it out. But Kate needs some help. <laughs> Technically, that's, that's just spinning in a bit of flour. Okay. One of the secrets, and I've seen this all the time, right? If I get a piece of dough and put it in that flour and I go like that, what happens? Spins what happens? It, ju it just spins around yeah. like that. But if I was to get a piece of dough on a surface actually flour free, yeah. slap that down the middle and go like that, it's all of a sudden it's got something to stick to. And there it is. Oh. See? It's as simple as that. It's crucial your dough is smooth because if it's cracked, this could become a hole when it's baked and it'll let out the steam and the pitta won't rise. Right, guys. Right, okay, so we've got Land of the Giant pitta. <laughs> You needed to divide it in half and divide it in half again. You could have made the big ones, they're just a little bit more awkward to make. Okay. Um, this one over here, it's, it's all right actually, it's pretty good. Um, 
Make sure it's all about the same, so you've got a fold there, flatten that down, nice and flat. After just a few minutes in the oven, let's see if the magic has happened. See the colour around the outside? Yes. Yeah. Just indicating that they're quite dry. Oh, nice. Look at the height of that fella. Oh, wow. That's very, very good. If you just flip it over and have a look on the underside, see oh, the colour? That, that colour there is what you're looking for. Look at that little fleck of brown, which you'll always get on the base, because that's the one that was in contact with the, with the tray yeah. that was heating in the oven. Very well done. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at the size of that fella. Well oh, done. Wow. Well Got done. Nice. Wow. That is just literally, it's like a little cloud. I pierce that, that is going to be where the steam comes out, see? Wow. There you have it. Wow. Yeah. Smells amazing. That's well great. done. I can't believe how easy they are. Yeah. They're so simple. Absolutely. Are you going to make these now? I am. Never going to buy them again. No, you, I don't think you will. That's, no. that's the yeah. thing. No. Pitta King. <laughs> Thank you. Well done. This just goes to show that even students who have never made a pizza before can succeed first time round. I've been making pizzas for a long time, and actually, the, the examples I've got here are all very, very good. Are you happy with them? Mm. Very happy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's have a closer look. First, at Kate's. I mean, look at this. There's your little pocket there straight away. That is just fantastic. Really, really good. Now, Kim. Moving on, these are good. It probably could have done with a little bit longer in the oven, but you've still got the pocket inside, and actually, it's baked. Yeah. What it's lacking is that colour, and then, do you know what the difference is between that and that? 20 seconds? Really? Wow. 30 seconds, possibly. And actually, it depends on the temperature of your oven. Mm. That is lovely soft. That's not dairy, that's bread. That is, oh. it's a good pizza. Thank you. But will the boys have done as well? Now, these guys here, I've seen this one before. This is very good. Um, lovely colour, flash of colour coming down here. Very, very good. I mean, I would, I'd buy a load of them. And how's Patrick's giant sized version turned out? Now, this, this is very good. Don't worry about the shape. That's the thing. Look at the shape of that. It looks like a boot. <laughs> looks like Italy. Put your knife in there. Just run it down. You can almost see yourself through it. It's that thin. Excellent. Well, there you have it. A little bit of Greek magic in your own kitchen. You're definitely going to do these again. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So simple. OK, I think you guys should tuck in and enjoy it. Yes. A little bit of pitta magic. So come on. Get baking.